Hello Fight Fans, it's John Pollock here alongside John Ramdeen and Robin Black. We are outside of the SKK Arena in St. Petersburg, Russia for the Sport Accord World Combat Games. In this venue behind us, we've seen sumo go down. We're going to see some fencing later this week. Lots of stuff going on, but we are coming off of UFC 166. And Robin, it is an event that some are calling the best UFC in history. What are your impressions uh, freshly off watching this card from Houston, Texas? Well, I didn't get to watch it till 11 o'clock this morning in Russia, which I think is around 7 p.m. on Wednesday, February 26th back in Canada. Now, now wait a minute. We talked earlier this week that we were all going to wake up at 6 a.m. Russian time. I was there. John Ramdeen was there. We watched the main card. Where was Robin Black? Well, I, I hate to... Uh, is it a Robin Blackout? <laughs> I hate to perpetuate the stereotype that Canadians enjoy to get drunk while in Russia, but four bottles of Russian Standard with Biamba, the, the Wayne Gretzky of sumo, really will take anybody off their game. But uh, having the time of my life here, man. Let's get back to the fights. Mr. Ramdeen, you and I uh, watch this uh, live, as live can be in Russia. Uh, Cain Velasquez, Junior Dos Santos will start there. Just a dominant performance from Cain Velasquez. Some arguing that it should have been stopped in that third round. It ended up with a stoppage in the fifth round. And just both of us watching this as Junior Dos Santos sat, sat on that stool right in between rounds three and four. You almost saw this man's soul just come out onto the canvas at the end of this. Uh, what did you think here of Cain Velasquez's performance? Yeah, clearly we, we all know that Cain Velasquez and Junior Dos Santos are the number one and number two heavyweights in the world. And they they proved that on Saturday night. Uh, Cain Velasquez Velasquez absolutely dominant, looking for the takedowns. It was not easy. Junior DeSantos came into this fight prepared to become the new UFC heavyweight champion. Unfortunately, just Cain Velasquez is on a different level. He's working with Daniel Cormier, a guy who's pushing him constantly in training camp. But Junior DeSantos, take nothing away from this guy, showed immaculate takedown defense, even when Velasquez managed to get this fight down to the ground. Uh, JDS got back up and made Velasquez pay for it. Yes, Cain Velasquez. Uh, earned the victory, got the stoppage, but it definitely wasn't easy. And Robin, this kind of leaves Junior Dos Santos in a bit of like no man's land right now. We are not going to see a fourth fight between these two anytime soon at this point. And Junior Dos Santos, I still maintain, is probably the number two heavyweight, which, which speaks volumes to where Cain Velasquez is in that division right now. Yeah, yeah, great point. And listen, we'll get to see if Junior Dos Santos is the number two guy when he faces the number four guy or the number five guy. But Cain Velasquez is the most intense, most seriously talented big man in the history of combat sports. That's how good the guy is. And it's helped by the fact that he trains every single day with one of the third or fourth best big men in the history of fighting. So they're elevating each other, him and Daniel Cormier, to another level. Cain Velasquez will be unbeatable for a long time. And you bring up Daniel Cormier, he gets a unanimous decision, all scorecards of 30-27 over Roy Nelson, who I've got to say, John, I thought this was an extremely flat Roy Nelson. You, he kind of got a pass against Stipe Miocic. He took that fight on very short notice after fighting just uh, just a couple weeks before that at UFC 159. In this case, I just saw Roy Nelson that you could see his shots coming from a mile away and Daniel Cormier, he looked tremendous standing. He was able to take down Roy Nelson at will and now seems to be going down to 205 pounds and it leaves Roy Nelson in a, in a precarious spot at heavyweight. Yeah, the thing about Roy Nelson, he had a couple of comments saying that uh, he was hoping that Daniel Cormier would engage him in this fight. He didn't feel that uh, the fans got to see a firefight, uh, maybe an indicative performance of what Roy Nelson, what we're used to seeing from Roy Nelson. But unfortunately, Daniel Cormier, in addition to him being athletic and explosive, he's extremely intelligent and he, he's a relative newcomer to mixed martial arts. This guy has only been in this game for about three years. So to see how, how much he's improved and progressed in his game is simply phenomenal. It wasn't just wrestling, though. We all know that he's got an excellent wrestling background, but it was his striking, it was his movement, it was his ability to avoid the big punches of Roy Nelson, and just the fact that he was able to dictate the pace, and he kept everybody guessing, throwing high kicks, kicks to the body. I think it was an absolutely brilliant performance by DC, and I cannot wait to see what he's going to do at 205 pounds. All right, we've got those two fights out of the way. Now we move over to Gilbert Melendez and Diego Sanchez. This is my fight of the year. This was an absolute battle, and when you look at what we've seen in the past month, Robin, but with John Jones, Alexander Gustafson, Raquel Pennington, Jessamyn Duke on The Ultimate Fighter, in a year that's produced fights like Carlos Condit and Johnny Hendricks, this 
this fight came out and set itself on a different level, in my opinion. Yeah, it was fascinating to watch it because Diego Sanchez is a very talented mixed martial artist but when he's in combat he's a silverback trying to dominate he's trying to be the alpha male in any situation his coaches are asking him to shoot in for something asking him to be technical and he goes in and he squares up and he th tucks his chin and he throws hard punches that is psychologically in the makeup of Diego Sanchez and every single fight he will be in will be exciting because of that and then his opponent is sitting there Gilbert Gilbert Melendez is looking at him. Gilbert Melendez wins the first couple of rounds by being a little more technical than the Savage. And in round three, he becomes the Savage as well, leans into him, and they trade for the, for the end of the fight. It was absolutely mind-blowing, psychologically an unbelievable fight. Uh, technically not the most exciting fight you're, you're ever going to see, unless you love seeing guys just smash each other's faces in, which I think most of us do. But an unbelievable, unbelievable fight. And the drama, John, of when Diego Sanchez has dropped Gilbert Melendez in the third round. I mean, Diego Sanchez might go down as one of those performers, just the epitome of that third round fighter, a guy who's behind on the scorecards, but made that third round so competitive that, you know, if he didn't scramble for his back, who knows if he could have finished Gilbert Melendez just getting on top of him. Yeah, that's the problem though. It's when you have that mentality and Diego's one of those type of fighters, it's good to have that, uh, that mindset when you're facing a guy like Gilbert Melendez your best option is to not try to choke this guy out. He works with Jake Shields and he works with Nick Diaz and, and David Terrell and all those guys from back in the day. So I think Diego Sanchez just kind of let that victory slip through his fingers in the sense that instead of just backing away and trying to attack uh, Gil Melendez with strikes, he has the idea of trying to finish him by submission and obviously it's just too difficult. But I think we called this fight, uh, we knew it was going to be fireworks because both of these guys, they just have that in them. They just move forward constantly. They always look for the finish and I think the most important thing, they always try to put on a show and the fans in Houston were treated to one of the best fights in recent memory. And we'll end on this note, Robin, when you look at this fight, it really brings up all these Diego Sanchez fights that he has produced in the UFC. Nick Diaz, Carl Parisian, Clay Guida, Jake Ellenberger, Martin Campman, and now we add this one. I mean, this guy might be pound for pound the most exciting fighter yeah. that has ever competed in the UFC. I'll put that uh, up against Clay Guida, uh, anyone you want to put against. This is just, it's an incredible resume that this guy has had. A guy that will probably never again challenge for a title, but will never ever be in need of of a must-win situation yeah it's in his genetic makeup you see it when he's uh, uh, presented with situations that he needs to be smart and technical and he can't be because his instincts is there's another gorilla in front of me and I have to smash it and I really want to see him fight Sam Stout one day but this is the most exciting fighter in the world and I think as long as he's willing and able to fight he will be the main card, it also featured Gabriel Gonzaga stopping Sean Jordan, as well as John Dodson getting the knockout of the night honors, stopping, uh, just in incredible fashion, Daryl Montague. It was a thumbs up show, maybe the best card of the year. Some going so far as to say the best UFC of all time. UFC 166 will certainly be well remembered. For John Ramdeen, Robin Black, I'm John Pollock here in St. Petersburg, Russia for the Sport Accord World Combat Games.